This time on Rad Rat Video, we're talking about skateboard biases. How can you figure out what yours are and what can you do to eliminate them? Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, a channel about skateboarding where I answer your questions about skateboarding. I play skateboarding video games and I used to teach tricks before I got really hurt. Uh, today, we're answering some of your questions. The first one is from k 81 who is a channel member and submitted his question through a comment. I don't usually do that, but as a member, he gets some special privileges. So he said, I've watched videos by gifted haters, skateboard dad, etc., and they all have a lot of respect for you. What do you think of the next generation of YouTube skating channels? And do you have any personal favorites? Well, I don't often watch a lot of skateboarding channels because uh, it's not easy for me to do like when I'm watching uh, stuff on YouTube, which is a lot, I watch like eight hours a day, but it's during work and I have this crazy wide screen. It's like a curved, like a super wide screen. And then another screen over here. I have my like work stuff over here, um, like my emails and all that. And then my main work surface here if it's you know whichever program and then i have a w little window over here where i'm i have something playing on youtube and so it's almost always just stuff that i can listen to and i can glance at every now and then so lots of skateboarding channels are about showing physical skateboarding clips and i can't actually watch them that much so i don't watch a lot of these channels but i have checked them all out so you mentioned Skateboard Dad. I uh, checked out a couple of his things. I think it's pretty cool. I subscribed to him. I like Night Speeds, VL Skate. He's not exactly next generation. I think his first video is from six years ago. Uh, Chad Caruso, Johnny Geiger, and Andy Schrock, but not from the channel you might think. He has a another channel called Power Nine Quest where he uh, opens cards, it's like you know different trading card games, uh, which I greatly enjoy uh, you mentioned gifted hater which uh i'm sure he's great his latest video as of the recording is about me and the the beef i had with the nine club you can watch my video about that right there but um i didn't really want to watch that <laughs> i'm really over that whole thing so uh i will have to check him out some other time but uh i'm sure he's great too but yeah i don't i don't really watch that much skateboarding stuff um so anyway, let's move on to the next question from Blue Candy Art, um, who says, Hi, Rad Rat from Fallout 4. Just kidding. So there is a Rad Rat in Fallout 4 because it's got rads. Anyway, um, uh, I like your channel and Rad Rat Comics too. So this may not be a question with an exact answer, but is one of those nerdy things that comes to mind when you skate. If someone does a a uh, ghetto bird, either modern or old school, down or over something the hard way, what would be the hard way in that case? The hard way cancels itself? And do you think at some point explaining skate tricks without a visual reference is going to become almost impossible even for skaters? All right. He talks about how the uh, people commentating on the skateboard uh, competitions in the Olympics were kind of funny. Okay. So you got two questions there. The first is about a ghetto bird and which way would be the hard way if you do it over something. And I thought about this because, yeah, they could both be considered the hard way. If you're approaching backside, let's picture like doing it over a handrail um, as an example. If you were to, to come up on it backside, the hard flip would be the easy way, but the late backside spin, you know, if you were to ollie over it backside, that would be the hard way. But the hard flip would be easier. And once you're in the air, the spinning rotation doesn't matter as much. I would say approaching it front side, getting that hard flip up and over the rail, like popping the tail and getting it up. Uh, that would be the hard part, and then the spin would, even though it'd be the easier way, it doesn't matter as much. So I, I would say approaching something front side would be harder, but at that point, I wouldn't necessarily say it was the hard way. I would just describe it because you're right; it is that one is kind of in a gray area. But as far as your second question is concerned, uh, will it eventually get to be where you have to have a visual reference to describe skateboarding? I. I kind of think that you're right and I don't like it because to me, 
You've seen the channel before. I'm often getting into the nitty gritty details about what a trick should be named. And if you're going this direction and you pop this way, keep in mind that the, the rotation names are switched in, in fakey or, you know, all that kind of stuff and getting really heavily into what a trick should be called. Oh yeah, you mentioned being in the, uh, or the commentators for the Olympics. And I made a shirt about being a, a team dropout for the, for the Olympics. Um, anyway, um, so I, yeah, like all, all of those trick names, I really like to get into those specifics. And I think it's important to be able to have a name that everyone would understand. But I've been thinking about it. And I think even if the most respected names in skateboarding got together and made a, like a, dictionary sized book describing every single trick so let's say it had tony hawk mullen gans uh maybe some more current skaters um and they all got together and they all had to agree on what things were called and they came up with a reference work for every single thing if it flips this way and then it goes that way afterward and it's in this stance then it's called this all that type of stuff every single thing you could possibly do named I don't think it would matter. Like, I don't think anyone would, would care. You know, if everyone got together and they all agreed that this thing that I would call, you know, w whichever trick I would call, like I, if I know the guy who invented it and I use his name, but nobody else does, you know, as an example, I can't think of a trick where that would be true, but then I wouldn't change how I call that trick because this book came out that says I'm supposed to. You know, like it's skateboarding is very independent. It's very much about you and your group of friends and what you call things. There's, there isn't like a association, like a major, uh, league of skateboarding that can set rules and set, you know, all these sorts of things. So like if somebody did that, if they came out with that sort of, uh, of work that explained what every trick was, I don't think it would really matter. You know, all that matters is what you like to call the trick. Uh, so like as new and newer and newer tricks come out, it's just kind of up to the person who came up with the name, you know, but, uh, what ultimately matters is what people choose to call it. If you come up with a really stupid name and no one wants to use it, then it's going to be up to the community to come up, come up with it. So I, yeah, I, I think about that sometimes. And, you know, back in the day, things were more centralized because if a pro skater went out and did some new trick that no one had, had ever seen before, the way you would see it is probably first in like a thrasher or a trance world and they would have to caption it. And so that was law. That's what it said. That's it. It's done. And while you can still go buy a, a thrasher, that's not the most common way to consume skateboarding. And it doesn't really matter as far as what they would name something. So, yeah, it's more of just a uh, overall uh, community thing and what people would choose to call it. So, yeah, I, th I think you're right that naming tricks can get more and more complicated as time goes on. But uh, I guess I guess we'll see. <laughs> but uh, let's move on. Uh, next question is from Andre, who says, Hey, Rad Rat, found your channel two months ago and have been enjoying it a lot. I find myself watching your stuff daily, especially the more gameplay-related stuff. I am 17 and never actually skated. I know a lot of people start way younger than me and take a long time to learn the basics. That makes me kind of nervous. Is it too late to start? When is too late to start skateboarding, in your opinion? So you found my channel relatively recently, so you may not have seen I have covered this question before, but if I were to give you just a flat answer, I would say like anything before 50, you could probably start. Depending on if you have other issues, if you're recovering from a heart attack or something, that may change things. If you are trapped in a body like mine where my knees get injured if I step off the bed wrong first thing in the morning, then maybe even in your 30s would be too late. But it really depends on you. As a 17-year-old, you're fine. <laughs> you're going to be totally fine uh, starting skateboarding now. But yeah, even in your, your mid-20s, into your 30s, you could easily start. Um, there was a guy I mentioned sometimes who he is... He's not a dentist. I always say that he's a dentist. He's not. He's like a holistic healer or something like that. But he's, he's an older guy. And he, uh, he started skating much, much later in life. 
and he does perfectly fine. So like it, it kind of depends. And it depends on what kind of skateboarding you want to do. If it's high impact jumping downstairs and you want to start when you're like 45, m- maybe not. But if you want to get more into transition and you just want to do lots of stalls uh, on the half pipe that's at the skate park, I'm sure you could do that. There's a lot of things you could do. Skateboarding is a very, very wide thing. You could just want to skate to the store and back so you don't have to, to drive your car as much. You can do that at pretty much any age. Learn how to ride on a skateboard. If you can walk, you can push on a skateboard, you know? So there's no real hard limit to that, but you are nowhere near it, even if there was. Okay, the last question is from Nick V, who says, As a skater starting out fairly recently, I've heard a lot of people talk about sort of unconscious biases that skaters possess when trying or learning certain tricks. I've heard a skater will naturally prefer kickflips or heel flips, front side 180s or backside pop pop shoves or front shoves and so on, even though there are plenty of skaters that can clearly do all of these very easily. My question is this, do you think that this bias really exists? Is it as clear cut as people say it is? And with your years of experience trying and learning new tricks, does does this apply to things beyond the basics like grind tricks, freestyle? Absolutely, it does. When you first start skateboarding, you generally will fall into one of two categories. You'll either be a kickflip and back shove person or a heel flip and front shove person. I was kickflip back shove and my friend Tony was a heel flip and front shove guy. And he, you know, as time uh, went on, we both learned the other ways, but just as a natural thing, if he wanted to do a heel flip and if he wanted to learn some new type of heel flip, it would be a lot easier for him. Uh, than it would be for me. And so like, uh, that was definitely the case. And with, with spinning, there's a lot to be said for that too. Like I could spin easier if I was like backside, it was always harder for me, which was not because it was harder to scoop. It's always easier to scoop backside. It might not feel comfortable in, in certain cases, but spinning backside is easier because of the way your leg is like, it's easier to kick backwards. So like, I had a lot of trouble spinning backside though. And the reason why was because I would always have my weight on my right foot, which is in, you know, for me, that's normally my back foot. So when I'm popping off my back foot, my weight's far back. I start to spin. The board just goes that way. I land over here. And if I land on the board by chance, I would shoot out. Now switch backside, not so hard because my weight is again on my, well, it's now my front foot but that's fine. You can pop the back foot out here, pull the board kind of uh, with me, do like a switch backside flip and it would stay with me no problem. So the thing is like, you've got to figure out why is that happening? And you can do that in a couple ways. Like for me, as I learned to trick switch, that's when I started to learn what I was doing wrong. And for me having all my weight to the, to my back foot, uh, or front foot in switch. That was a big thing that I figured out that I could do uh, or figured out that I was doing and that I had to uh, fix. So in uh, my my normal stance, I could do a Casper flip, which would be like a half kick flip and then I'm gonna catch it with my back foot and spin it around that way and land it. I could never do that switch. My, like all my, my, my weight is on my front foot. And so to flip it and then do something with this foot while I'm already in the air, like it it didn't feel right. It didn't make any sense. I I couldn't do it, but I could do a hospital flip, which is very similar. And I could flip it and then catch it on my front foot and pull it around. The board does kind of the same thing, but in, in a different way, you can learn that trick right here, by the way. And like, um, that's because I would have all of my weight on the right foot. So what is it for you? Why is it that a certain trick is easier than a a, a different one? Is it because of the way you stand on the board? For me, I would always face forward. Like I would not ride sideways and look this way kind of. I would have my whole body and shoulders turned the direction I'm skating. And that caused a lot of problems. If I was trying to land straight, I would always spin a little bit because I'm twisted this way. And as I ollie, the board's going to turn just a little bit. To me, that came about pretty naturally as I just learned switch tricks. I realized which ones were easier than they were in my normal stance and figured out why they might be easier. And then I could apply those lessons to my my normal stance. Or I could teach myself something switch by, you know, showing myself how I do it, uh, do it normal and where my shoulders are. Um, but you can do that. You can, uh, you can 
record yourself. Back in the day when I was first start, starting to learn skateboarding, I had a camera like one of these camcorders with a full size tape in it and I had to have it plugged in. So I had to run an extension cord outside. It was a big hassle. I couldn't really do that all the time just to like help myself learn. But you know, these days, if you have an iPhone, you can put on like slow motion mode and watch how you do this trick. Are, is your, are you kind of off balance in the air? Are you kind of twisted and you're looking over your shoulder when, when the board is flipping or something like that? And you can figure out why it is that you do the things you do. Why is it easier, normal? Why is it harder, nolly? That type of thing. And you can get to be better at skateboarding through examining what you, what you do. But I would say a bigger question that you have to ask is, does it matter? Because there are some big name skaters like P-Rod, for example, he always does his hard flip switch. Always. So, like, d is it important that he learns from himself and can, like, figure out his shoulder position and his weight balance and all that and figure out how to do them normal? D it, it doesn't really matter. He's still a pro skater. He can still do hard flips down big gaps and over, you know, big things and all that if he wants to. Uh, is it important to be able to do everything in every way? I, I, I don't really think so. So for me, switch front side stuff maybe is easier and normal backside stuff is, is easier. That's fine. That means that I can do more tricks. Um, so yes, it is very cut and dried clear that it's it's you can fall into different camps and you can learn different things and you can learn them wrong. It's nice to be able to fix those problems, but it might lead to other tricks being easier. So I wouldn't beat yourself up about it too much. Hopefully that makes sense. That's it for now. If you have any questions, go to radratvideo.com and you can submit it on the form on the homepage. You can also get some shirts on there, my normal traditional ones, or you can go to the new store and check out some of these other ones. Uh, you can sponsor me on Patreon and submit your questions through there if you would like. And you can also join and become a channel member and get some perks that way too. But that's it. I will see you next week. Thanks for hanging out.